Welcome back to L'Amore La Musique. Today we're going to be talking about makeup empties. It's, I guess, also a declutter. For example, I am having to clear out a bunch of nail polishes that are old, but there is quite a bit of empty makeup in here and some things that I am just so beyond relieved to have finished to completion and I'm very proud of myself. I have some palettes as well that I'm decluttering and clearing out. And a lot of this is also tied into my enthusiasm for undertaking a project pan this year. Everything in here is part of my project pan, but also there's some things in here that are just everyday things I know I'm gonna use up so they're not necessarily a project pan, like my plume eyebrow pencil. Um, and like a couple of other things, but it's too much, I think, to do makeup empties and project pan. If you're interested in seeing me talk through the project pan products, maybe doing a project pan get ready with me, I don't know, I might do it on Patreon, I might do it here if I have time, ha ha ha. But today, let's just talk about this empty makeup. I'm like cascading everything out to try and get organized. Why don't we start with strictly empty or, I mean, some things are not fully empty, but effectively empty before they went bad. The most exciting empty for me, and I was actually waiting to do this video until this was completely done, the Graydon Face Glow. I feel like I've been on such a journey with this product. I discovered it through a Beauty Heroes box like two summers ago, I wanna say at this point. Tried a sample, loved it, ended up buying it. It went through this weird like triple price hike in like a very condensed period of time, I remember. And I was like, okay, that's like the only one of these I'll buy. It just got like kind of really expensive, but now I kind of get it because there is so much product in here. A lot of people really like it. It's not marketed as an SPF, but it does have titanium dioxide in it. So the way I used this was I mixed it into a CC cream and just use it as like an everyday base over my skincare. I was just so over the scent by the end of it. And it's one of those things that I just, I was like, I'm using all of it up on principle. I really wanted to ditch it about three quarters of the way through, but thanks to the airtight packaging, it did stay good. It performs nicely. It does kind of even out the skin tone although it has a very gray pink cast to it. So I wouldn't repurchase it again. I really liked kind of the first third to half of the bottle experience and then I got just so fatigued on it. Okay, this duo is pretty much done. I had had both of these for close to two years, but I really used them and basically consider them empty products. The Ilia Truskin Serum Foundation and the Ilia Truskin Serum Concealer really good duo. I covered this quite extensively in the foundation lineup I did, I think last year. Um, I will link that for you to go see. This I mistakenly thought did not have silicones in it, but it actually does. So just be aware of that. It is a really, really beautiful experience foundation. Both are light medium coverage, somewhat buildable, very dewy. So if you're normal to dry, I think they're a really good option. Um, I started needing more intense coverage than the concealer was offering. So I recently switched to the Fit Glow Correct Plus, the peach one. They just do two little dots under the eye and I really like that. And then I'll top it with a little bit of foundation. I replaced this with the new Care Weiss Liquid Foundation, which I really like. I might do some sort of comparison between the Care Weiss Cream Foundation and the new Liquid Foundation because they're quite different and I really like both a lot for different reasons. So in the future, I would probably consider repurchasing these. Um, this doesn't even really function like a, a true serum foundation. Because in my mind, a lot of serum foundations struggle with that kind of like particle suspension issue. Although I have heard people that are very dry and have dry patches that this can cling to it. It never did for me using a beauty blender. So I just had really good experience with both of those. <clears throat> now the rest of the empties I think are all eye products here. I have a number of eyebrow products. I have two empty Juice Beauty brow gels. This was the brow gel that I had been using for like the last two, maybe even three years. It replaced Glossier Boy Brow for me. I liked it a lot and I would often say I really like this product with these caveats. You don't get a lot of product. It dries out really quickly. Those are kind of like the main, the main things. It's not a perfect product, but I really liked the wand, the precision. I got the darkest shade and 
liked it and eventually decided to take the plunge and try hang on it's in my everyday makeup bag right here the Ilia essential brow volumizing brow gel and I do like this better than these so I'm now devoted to the Ilia brow gel I get this in dark brown the brush is a little bit bulkier here uh, you can get a little bit of clumping but overall I think this tints the brows better you get a ton more product it's a bit of a more refined experience overall I think it's a better product than the juice beauty and then I have two empty plume eyebrow pencil refills. You go through these so quickly, but it is the best eyebrow pencil I have ever used for sure. Um, I keep like many backups of, well, actually, I guess I kept this little box as an empty too. They come two to a pack and I think they're $19 for these refills. You just click them into one end of the pencil that you buy one time and then there's a brush on the other end. I get chestnut decadence. I get my refills through Beauty Hero. So if you're a member, you can get 15% off. What do you know? I have a lone refill in here. I thought this was an empty box. It's like still the holidays around here and I'm still really sad that our tree is not up actually I don't know why I'm still having really prolonged winter blues at the same time really really anxious for spring to come this year I think it's having a toddler maybe it's just winter is very rough this year um so yeah love those so I have two empty ones of those and then I had finished did I completely finish this oh apparently I didn't actually fully finish this I think that it had gone bad and I just well, it really had dried out and I decided to throw in the towel. This was a previous favorite, the Anastasia Brow Definer. I would rotate between the Brow Definer and the Brow Wiz, but the Plume Pencil is just so much better. This is like that kind of blunt tip, um, similar to the Hourglass one, which I had tried years ago. This one is just, it dried out and got like too waxy to work with. And I just, it was one of those things where the experience of the plume pencil and how easy it was to work with, how quick, how nicely the color would deposit. I was like, I'm, I'm done trying that. And then this is effectively done. I, I pretty much used all of it. The Trish McAvoy Intense Gel Liner Pencil in black. It, the texture of it started changing, but I usually go through one of these every two years or so. It's my favorite gel pencil, and the only thing I do with it is tight line the upper lash line <laughs> with it, but it's a wonderful product for that. I do have a couple of other official empties. I do have the very last Tarte Lights Camera Lashes Mascara that I you know, pretty much used up or it got to be six plus months old and it was time to move on. My new everyday mascara that I plan to continue repurchasing is the Kosas Big Clean Mascara, I think it's called. Talked about this in my Best of Beauty 2020. I really like it. I know a lot of people don't, but I love a big, fluffy, somewhat spidery type of lash. It's messy and you have to clean the wand, but I, to me, it's worth it. I really like the effect that it gives. Had been wanting to find a replacement for this for so long because I hate the packaging and I, you know, it was, I still do really like the mascara, but I have to say I do prefer aesthetically this one to this one. It was finally time to replace my very first Surat Autographique eyeliner pen, which if anyone remembers, this has never been the same in my life since I tried to wash the actual brush tip. Now, for anyone that doesn't know the way this product works, I don't want to get all messy. The You buy the pen once and then it has these refills in it love refillable makeup right and I had refilled it successfully for years and then I just started thinking like man I would be washing my makeup brushes so let me try and wash the tip of this and it just never performed the same after so when I saw Costco had Surat uh, pens and refills it was I forget what the set was it was around the holidays we go to Costco like once a month I saw it there someone actually had tipped me off and I picked one up and that's what I've been using. I do have to say, I wonder if something has changed about the pen because I find that in my new one, I'm not getting the same rich, vibrant black that I used to get with this. I don't know. If you've experienced changes with this product, I don't know if it's like just not, if it's being produced somewhere else or the quality has gone down. I don't know. It's still wonderful, but I feel like I'm not getting the jet black line that I used to get when this was at its prime before I ruined it. Okay, this will be like kind of a nice transitional product now to talking about the 
declutter of things that have primarily just gone bad which is what really instigated me being like okay i'm gonna do a project pan this year i'm tired of wasting money on makeup that i don't get to this is an empty <laughs> well very very mangled henne organics lip balm i bought this from beauty heroes maybe over the summer I had wanted to try it and I think having an on the go twist up lip balm as opposed to like a pot of lip balm, which is mostly what I have, was use was gonna be useful. And I kept this in my little kind of travel cosmetics bag where I keep hair ties and band-aids and all that kind of stuff. Baby Lamore got his grubby little paws on this. And you know, like kids, toddlers really love to sort through like a cosmetics bag. He was just totally fascinated with doing this over and over and doing this. And, you know, one day, this went on for a long time, and I was like, okay, I'll just, like, let him play with it. And then one day, I saw the actual product detached from the housing on the floor. I actually kept it, like, not, I, I kept the nub on our kitchen counter. This is, like, such a mom thing. I just kept it on the kitchen counter, and when I needed it, I, like, go use it, like, super unsanitary, right? I finally just threw it away. I posted about this, I think, on Instagram. Someone said kind of the most astute thing. I, I had shown a broke a picture of, like, the broken nub next to the packaging, and this person wrote me and said, well, it wasn't that good anyway, and she's kind of right. Um, Henny products are, I don't know, I honestly, I find them pretty middling. They're not terrible. I do think the packaging is beautiful, but it was kind of like like not nothing special or to write home about i am somewhat curious about the tinted they do tinted versions of these which i think could be intriguing but the formula itself was not really that memorable all right now let's talk about some decluttering things well the packaging of this completely broke i just got tired of using it and it was a good lesson for me uh, with Ritual Diffie. I actually have three of these little compacts and one of them is in my project pan. The one I'm decluttering is the Ethereal Veil Conceal and Cover in the shade Sarah's. I did hit pan. I got a fair amount of use out of it. I was kind of using this as a foundation concealer. It was always a little bit too light. Definitely a little bit too light as a foundation. Also, frankly, like too too heavy to use as a foundation in my opinion as it's really meant to be more of a concealer type of product but it was a little bit too thick to use as a concealer it definitely will settle in kind of like fine lines it can look a little bit crepey it's a bit of a high maintenance product and I have had issues with all of my Ritual Diffie compacts I also have Eros which is a contour product that I like and I'm still using and the Project Pan for me is actually ice bow a highlight which beauty heroes i was happy to see is carrying and i put ice bow as my project pan because it's probably my favorite i like eros a lot too this is the one i'd really like to make some progress on this year thankfully it still smells fine and has not gone bad i sadly cannot say the same for this which went bad very quickly and is getting decluttered it's the ritual defeat ashen ember eye soot in half light i actually have an igtv using this it's such a beautiful color and if i had project panned this i would have used so much more of it and i would have felt so much less guilty i just barely used it and it has a terrible smell. It's just really a shame. However, I hope that you will be proud of me the way I am proud of myself for having already used more of Andromeda, which is the other formula. This is the Celestial Sphere Eye Soap from Ritual Defeat. So Ashen Ember and Celestial Sphere. I have already used more of Andromeda than I did of Half Light, and I've had it for, I don't know, a couple months. This is in my project pan. I use it almost every day in my inner corner or if I'm feeling ambitious or I have like a little bit more time, I'll do it all over my lids. I love it. I love both of them, but I'm determined to use more of Andromeda than I got to use of Half Light. I also have some K.R. Weiss, unfortunately, that went bad. I have two K.R. Weiss products in my project pan. Actually, this is kind of working out nicely. I'm getting to show you some of the project pan stuff while I talk about the empties because they really are very intricately related. So this finally went bad. I did hit pan, but I used maybe a third of this. It's a wonderful product. K.R. Weiss Cream Blush in Abundance. This was recommended to me over and over many years ago when I was finally discovering what my undertones really were, that I'm really a light olive. <clears throat> and that's why so many blushes were 
turning like red or peachy on me and I just wanted a true cool toned mauvey blush and this is definitely it if you have cool undertones neutral undertones multi-ethnic undertones green in your skin olive um such a good product it goes with everything multi-season I, I don't really have an excuse why I didn't use more of it. I mean, it's super concentrated and pigmented, so you need such a small amount, but I really love this product. Now I do also have, actually maybe I already told you about these. I had done that depotting, cleaning, and refilling of K.R. Weiss compact video, I think sometime in 2020. Yeah, these are, I don't know why I held on to these, but they are time to um, get rid of this was honor lipstick and actually in my project pan this year is what I refilled that with hold please which is mesmerize and I've already used a fair amount that's all I have left I use this as a cream blush or as an everyday neutral lip color it's a perfect nude mid-tone pink on me which i love and then this was uh the radiance highlight which i barely used because the glitter was too chunky i think that they have since reformulated this i don't think the glitter in the care Weiss highlights are as chunky anymore i'll be depotting this no idea what i'll refill it with yet i feel like i do kind of have my hands full trying to finish um well the care Weiss cream foundation is in my project pan you can see i'm doing really well with that and then the care Weiss dazzling bronzer which i think will probably be the first thing in my project pan that I finish because you kind of need a lot of it uh, to get it to show up on the skin. So that's also project pan for me. All right, it's finally time for me to say goodbye to some RMS products. I'm having a really hard time in particular getting rid of Diabolique, which has been discontinued and sacred. These were just such an amazing duo for me for so many years, but they are just, they're too old. I can't keep them around. I mean, they're like six years old, probably. Well, maybe, maybe not, maybe like five years old because I've been doing YouTube for seven years and I got these maybe a couple years into YouTubing. And this was actually the second Diabolique. I had gone through a whole one of this. They do smell kind of funky, but they did stay good for a super long time. I'm sad to say goodbye to these. It's really kind of like the end of an era for me. If, I, if RMS Diabolique was still, I tried to get one actually, but they were sold out everywhere. Someone gave me some dupes, <clears throat> but I also have found that the quality of RMS products sadly has declined over the years as they went more mainstream and into Sephora and whatnot, because I'm also saying goodbye to the Champagne Rosé Luminizer, which I've only had for a couple years, but I don't know, it just doesn't smells bad it doesn't have the same longevity that the other rms products did i used a fair amount of it i just am am gonna be so much more attuned to using up what i have before getting accumulating especially a lot of highlight because it's like a hard product to go through i just i never use this i don't like it on my skin anymore the uncover up which i have in 11. i had this was probably my third one of these i had gone through a 22 and 11 and then i got another 11. I just feel like it sits on my skin now and it could be that not just the product formulation has changed but like my skin has changed right you know i'm seven years older than when i started youtube i'm 38 so yeah i mean i think i just maybe am looking for product i've never really liked heavy face products which would explain why uncover up and the ritual defeat they're just not my favorite i do but you know the care weiss foundation is really pretty heavy and i love love the care wise cream foundation yeah it's like i'm i don't know if i'm really ready to like throw these away <laughs> i've been keeping them in the drawer of my desk here but these i'm kind of okay to be you know recycle scoop them out or clean them and recycle them or whatever okay this was another one that's really hard for me to be done with but it's old and it's just not good anymore and they don't make it so oh it smells bad but it's been discontinued it's the vapor stratus instant skin perfector in 902 it's like i, I want to enshrine these products because they just remind me of such a happy time in my beauty blogging evolution i have such happy memories of feeling so elated when i discovered products that were just so wonderful they made me so happy to use i loved the way they made my skin look 
um, they were just so blissful to me when I discovered them and started using them and then sharing that enthusiasm with L'Amour. So this may, I may also kind of hold on to this in, <laughs> I need like a beauty mausoleum or something. I mean, these are just products that didn't work. They're more kind of, yeah, probably disappointing products, honestly, but we'll talk about them here because they're makeup. These are actually both liquid liners, but I would consider both of them to be relatively disappointing. The Well People liquid liner, more of like kind of that old school Zuzu Lux type of brush. And then this is the Juice Beauty eyeliner. It has a little bit of a shorter tip. Very difficult to use, both of them. Really kind of gloopy formulas. You don't have a lot of control. I mean, if you're like an, an advanced or an experienced liquid liner user, they're okay. But I don't know, the experience of the Surratt is just so much easier. And there's so many other liquid liner pens that are just infinitely better in my opinion than these so two quite disappointing eyeliner liquid eyeliners we'll talk about lips nail polish and then uh these palettes that are getting reconfigured and ushered out i think it's time for me to get rid of this urban decay glide on pencil in the color voodoo it's like a bright purple i honestly like never wore this i i kept it around it was like a free sephora gift i never used it i do still have my urban decay cobalt blue liner which i think is beautiful and i love playing around with cobalt blue on the eyes but a bright purple i feel like i have shadows that i could use in lieu of that and it's old um it was finally time for me to be done with my becca liptuative glow gloss i didn't never used a ton of this this was i was inspired by i think tt sandra some summers ago like three or four years ago like fine product but yeah, I mean, it's probably still fine to use. I just never really liked it. It's one of those like self-adjusting type of colors. I just, uh, doe foots are, I have to really like a product to want to go through the faff of a doe foot. I don't ever use doe foots directly on my lips. That's like one of my, you know how some people don't like to put their fingers in skincare? I'm fine with that as long as my hands are clean. I guess if my lips are completely bare, then I'm okay to use a doe foot, but yeah, I'm being very long-winded about that. Let's move on. Also a doe foot and pretty close to an empty. This is about as close to an makeup empty as I will get, um, but I love this. This is the Modern Minerals yeah it's it's gone bad this is modern minerals pot parashka it's one of the lotus way infused lip glosses i think she's still making these i love this one i would buy it again in a heartbeat um in fact i might if it's if i can find it but when diane the person behind Momi and Modern Minerals came on my podcast. I know she was talking about potentially, like she didn't know what they were gonna do with the makeup line, which really bummed me out because her Lotus Way infused lip glosses were the first lip gloss product I feel like I had ever encountered that I actually wanted to use. I had not been a lip gloss person prior to these and I still really, really love Pod Parashka which I had discovered through Beauty Heroes. And then this product I love, I actually just bought a new one over the holidays. It's the Jane Iredale Lip Pencil in Berry. Hang on, let me show you the new one so you can see how much of it I did use over the years, quite a bit. This is new. And I just really needed a new one. It was five plus years old. It was fine. It was kind of getting a little dried out. I really like it. I've never found another tone of berry lip liner that I like as much as this one. The formula of Jane Iredale lip liners I think is really good. So this is what I use for so, like I used it today. I'm wearing K.R. Weiss Royal but it's just such a versatile lip liner. I can use it with so many bolds or reds. Um, I do also have Mac Cherry for a brighter red lip liner. And then my everyday nude lip liner is Care Wise Bear. And I feel like I have my bases really covered with those. Okay, nail polish. I'm having to get rid of these four Isla polishes, which I got a lot of use out of. I mean, it's kind of hard. Oh, actually I'm so impressed with how much of this got used. I didn't know. I mean, if I'm looking at this, it's kind of hard to see, but there's only about a third of this left in here. And this is Isla Make Him Wait a Day. And then this one is got used less. Like it's up to about there, but I used this so much. This is Serang. Also getting rid of the two top coats better than gel and shine. 
you can see I used quite a bit more of shine, almost half, and then barely used the shine top coat. They are just not good anymore. You can tell because when you do a manicure with them, the manicure never fully sets. The nail color does not set. So even if you wait hours, you'll still get indentations and marks and that's just a sign that the nail polish is old. I actually really need to get rid of all my nail polishes. I have been using two new nail polishes from the brand Emily Heath, which I'm testing for my Indie Beauty Expo 2019 awards, and I'm totally smitten. I have a red, which replaces this, and then I have the Emily Heath Top Coat, which replaces both of these. Actually, I am still using my Isla Base Coat, which seems okay. So I have an Isla Base Coat, and I'm gonna be decluttering most of my other nail polishes. I don't have a ton, but I might pick up one or two more shades from Emily Heath and just rotate between those for the foreseeable future. I see no point in accumulating more than two or three nail polishes given how often I'm able to paint my nails now. One other quick thing, I tried the EXA foundation, I think like late summer or fall, I had gotten this big sample pack from with a credo order I had made. I tried the primer and the foundation. These are just not my shades. I had tried one or two shades. I thought it was fine. I was not not intrigued enough to buy a full size, to be honest with you, but do appreciate the shade range and it's always fun to try new base products. Now, here are three palettes. Actually, this these are palettes and then this is a Z palette with some things I have to get rid of in it. The first and most straightforward thing I need to get rid of is my Fit Glow palette. This is the Night palette. Absolutely freaking loved this palette. I used it a lot, more than it probably looks like. I didn't touch this at all. It was one of those colors that's not made at all for a cool or olive person. It's much better, gonna be much better if you have more yellow or warm undertones, I think. It's very, it kind of reminds me of like a Mac Melba or something maybe. No, also never touched the highlight because it was too yellow. But these four shadows, this was such a good all over the lid neutral sculpted look. These were wonderful, mixed as different eyeliners. I just loved this palette, but it started smelling funky. Yeah, I mean, it just, just the shadows smell bad. It's weird because eyeshadows tend to stay good for powder eyeshadows, mostly stay good for a really long time. But I've also heard from other people that their Fit Glow palette went off after a couple of years. So I do, I did love it. It was a Beauty Heroes discovery. Never tried the Day palette. I know a lot of people like that one too. <sighs> I just, I never, never go in here. This is my 1Z palette. These are some ancient, ancient depotted Jane Iredale shadows, these three. And that's a very, very old MAC shadow. I think it's called MAC. They, they've been depotted, so they don't have the names on them. This is a Red Apple lipstick <laughs> eyeshadow. No one ever talks about that brand anymore. I think this was Hoax, maybe, H-A-U-X from MAC. The three Jane Iredale shadows were from that neutral palette. If you watch any of my, you know, vintage L'Amour makeup videos from 2014 or 2015, I was, I think I even did a giveaway of this Jane Iredale palette. I freaking loved it. Such a good neutral palette. And I would still, like, I would consider getting it again today. This was a really pretty red apple lipstick, like burgundy shadow. I love burgundy on brown eyes. Um, and then this is an old, pretty, it's like three years old at this point, KRY's cream shadow that I barely used. I mean, it creased pretty bad. The color was a little bit too cool for my liking, so it was kind of a bust. And I had ordered a refill because I thought the cream shadows fit in the K.R. Weiss powder eyeshadow refills, and it turns out they don't. So it got stuck in my Z palette and I never used it. So honestly, all of these have to go. I just think they're too old and I have other eye products I really need to use up. Now the last thing is that I've been hemming and hawing for a long time about trying to streamline my palettes. I don't have that many, but I just recently got for Christmas for myself that new NARS palette. I don't wear a ton of eye makeup, but it was so beautiful and I just really felt extremely drawn to it. This is the one that I just get the least use out of. It's the Aether Beauty Crystal Grid Gemstone Palette. I like one shadow in here and it's this coppery brown. So I may endeavor to try and depot this one shade, but I have no idea. Well, it could be okay, 
but a lot of the other shadows like these are too warm i actually just tried to play around with this weird kind of yellow ochre shimmery shade it's called topaz on a live stream that i just did it actually pairs quite nicely with the mustard baby poop ochre color from the aether joshua tree palette which i also have but i just like i'll never use this sky blue color these khaki colors i don't know they, this Pe peacock blue is really pretty so i think i'm destined to depot at least this one and you know i may save a couple of the others and put them in here after i clear this out but this is really the one that i get the least use out of i'm gonna hang on to the rose quartz palette the very first palette aether ever did i think this was this is not available anymore it was just on a limited run so I still have two Aether palettes. I still have my Kevin Aquan palette. I have Viseart Cool Mattes. And I have that new NARS palette. I have also decluttered my Lavina Eye Magic palette. I just was not getting enough use out of it. Yeah, I think that that's everything. And you can see that there is quite a bit of disappointing waste here that has really made me reflect on what I have and I think this is just the evolution of a beauty enthusiast whether you blog or share your enthusiasm or not or it's just for yourself or how involved you are in the online beauty community I think we do all probably eventually reach a point with both skincare and makeup where we've we've done a lot of our testing and experimenting and trying new things and then we realize that we have one face and we just need to be more attuned to, to what we're using and not not accumulating right um i've always kind of justified it because of doing lamore i'm like oh but like i need to know this and i need to test this and there inevitably will be you know through pr and, and new launches and things like that i'll try more than i would if i was just a beauty consumer not doing lamore but i can't recommend enough reflecting on putting together a project pan i didn't show you everything but i showed you mostly everything um maybe i'll do like a six month update over the summer I'm I'm loving it and I don't know why I was just never drawn to the idea in years past and now I am I think it's like the motherhood transition what 2020 was to all of us it's just been lots of reevaluating. so I hope you enjoyed this I tried to be speedy and it, I know it's still long I know some of you like long videos I know some of you wish they were shorter if you're interested in hearing skincare updates I'm going to be doing a skincare cabinet tour and just a look at my routines that I've been doing over the last couple months on patreon that's what patrons voted on this month we're gonna be just talking all things kind of late winter skincare you know the spiel i mean i do extra podcast episodes i do private instagram stories now um and patreon is really how i keep lamore viable you know that i don't do any sponsored work i do not take money from companies to make instagram posts or feature content and videos and most beauty vloggers do do that. Um, so I don't, and there's a lot of capital investments that are needed to keep Lamour going. I pay an audio engineer for my podcast. I have equipment upgrades. I have lots of hosting fees and my time. <laughs> so I am so appreciative to the people that value my work and are able to come to Patreon and also get to partake in all of the extra work that I do over there. Patreon.com slash La Musique if that was a compelling pitch for you. <laughs> if not, I will see you back here next week. I'm trying really hard to get weekly videos out and put out a lot of obviously still free and generous work out in the world, which I hope you enjoy. I will have everything I talked about listed and linked below in the description bar. All of the information about how to sign up for my newsletter, how to listen to the podcast, how to do XYZ, all of my codes and discounts, it's all in the description box. Enough rambling, wishing you guys a very happy Sunday, although I may try and get this up midweek. We'll see. Love you guys. I'll talk to you soon. Bye.